Is Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence the fight to bring boxing back? No, but uh, <laughs> it won't be. But it will, we'll, we'll really enjoy it, but it won't bring boxing back. I mean, this fight is basically Chad Dawson versus Andre Ward. If we're being realistic, this is an HBO level fight. But because it's been it's taken this long to get there, it's going to be a pay-per-view event. But this is the fight that creates the welter, the best welterweight since Floyd Mayweather was the best welterweight. And this is going to be the fight that creates an icon. But I think as boxing fans, we misgauge how much how excited we are compared to the whole world is. Uh, do you feel like what is the reason why the whole world isn't excited about this fight? Is it due to poor promotion? Um, just a, a lack of those particular fighters fighting what once, twice a year? I think, well, I mean, activity is an issue, but I mean, there's that's a double sided coin, right? Like, as fans, we want to see people uh fight as often, right? Me and YSM Media, we want to see a guy fight six times a year. That guy's family wants to see him probably fight twice, right? Because there's a lot of trauma and there's damage from each fight. So, I mean, I understand both sides of that coin. I think the issue is some of these fighters just aren't compelling. And the, the career arcs just don't grab people. Terrence Crawford's one of my, my favorite fighters. But, like, I was at an amateur show this weekend and they go, hey, man, I'm not watching every Terrence Crawford fight. They're like, he has to be in there with a specific fight because the entertainment value leading up to the fight doesn't do it for me. So I can watch the highlights. And that's a, that's a high-level pugilist that told me that. Errol Spence, I think that more people gravitate towards him. But even Errol, it's like he gets that. He gets a big push with the Dallas Cowboys fan base. And I do think being on pay-per-view, people are aware of him and he has a fan base. But I also think that like people are yearning to see these guys fight big name fighters where they don't know what's going to happen. And I feel like this fight to me feels like Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, where when Fury won, Fury became a capital G guy in the sport. So for for some reason, these two fighters have to fight one of the schoolyard bullies, beat him up, and then they get that respect on a cultural level. It's the classic one guy's going to elevate and become a cultural icon and the other guy's going to be remembered as a very good fighter. We saw this story this weekend with Lethal Weapon 4, Canelo versus Golovkin. Canelo's <laughs> going to be the icon. Golovkin's going to be, hey, he was a real good fighter, but he couldn't. He wasn't better than Golo uh, Canelo. That's how that story's going to be written. The, there's only typically one cultural icon in these type of fights. And I just feel like people, because they're good, that doesn't mean they're a cultural icon. That doesn't mean if... If these two guys go to the MTV Music Awards as boxer guy, do you think more people are interested in them or Ryan Garcia? And it's like maybe if they beat each other, people would go up and they'd be like, oh, that's Errol Spence or that's Terrence Crawford. He's next to Tony Hawk and, and Ashley Simpson or whoever the celebrities are at the time of the MTV Awards. Right now, they don't really stand out besides boxing people and hardcore fight fans. And that's the issue is they need something where the world takes notice. And I think that it's them those two against each other long answer bro long answer who wins that fight Luke? i don't know bro because it's like i i think terrence is the better fighter but i am concerned about the size of errol spence because it's like they have weight classes for a reason he's a bigger fighter i'll, I'll do, let me get controversial with you so like a guy like errol spence to me is a lot like a guy like in a way right and i know people on here they're going to get mad when I say that, but it's like if a Usyk exists in these guys' divisions, do you think Usyk loses to in a way if he's at 118 pounds? I think Usyk beats in a way at that. And it, like, that's the way I'm looking at these fights. If all things are equal, who has the most dominant skill set? Usyk's more dominant than in a way, right? Because in a way to me screams of a knockout waiting to happen. He's a, a power puncher. He's got elite timing, but at the same time, it's like, if he if he was around a really really elite boxer, it's going to be a hard fight. It's going to be a hard fight. There's no if ands or buts. And if he runs into the guy that can take his punch, it's the same thing. Spence kind of feels like that same guy, where it's like if he runs into the guy that can take his power, that can move, it's going to be a hard fight. The problem is, Terrence gets dropped a couple of times. He got dropped by Mean Machine. He got 
kind of buzzed by Gamboa. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think the reason we as hardcore fight fans are excited is Terrence Crawford has all the tools and the path to victory to beat an Errol Spence, but we want to see just how hard Errol Spence hits because the power is the X factor that no one can gauge going into this fight. If you had to lay money on the wood, who would you take? I'm taking Terrence Crawford, but I'm taking Boots over both of them. How about that for a headline? Boots beats both of them. I agree. And, and it's not close. <laughs> I agree. <laughs>